Hello crafty friends, I'm Lean from Studio Kato and I'm so happy to be back on my YouTube channel today and I'm so happy you're joining me as well. Today I am sharing two watercolor cards that I made for a guest spot with Altenew. They invited me to create with some of their products and they are giving me two $25 gift cards to give away as well. Uh, now the giveaway is over on Instagram so check that out in the description below for a chance to win one of the $25 gift cards. So with probably the most important <laughs> information out of the way, let's get into making some cards. I'm going to be making some watercolor cards. I don't get my watercolors out too often these days. And it was a really welcome break. Uh, I really enjoyed putting these cards together. Now I'm starting out by stamping my image. This is the Paint a Flower the Tulips stamp set from Altenew. There are a bunch of sentiments in there as well. I'm sadly not using those today. <laughs> I had a different idea for a sentiment. I'm stamping that a couple of times with Versafine Onyx Black ink onto watercolor cardstock. I'm using my Misty for that. And then I am heat embossing this with WOW Clear Gloss Super Fine Embossing Powder. Now the watercoloring is sped up, but I've made sure to uh, not speed it up too much when I show you how I colored these tulips because I think that's the most interesting thing about this bouquet and I think that will show you the watercoloring technique the best. So for these tulips I start out by painting on some just some water. <laughs> no paint added first and then I drop in a color at the top of the petals and then a color at the bottom. I chose a purpley pink and an orange uh, for my tulips today. The water that I added first will help them to blend together but you don't need to do that. If you want a more bold look you can skip the water. It might be a little bit harder to blend the colors together but you could still manage. And I always play around with my paints a while before I'm happy. So I blend away, I add some paint here and there to brighten up the colors. And I'm going to do the same thing for all four tulips. Now the tulips aren't going to look like much at first. I am going to add more paint for the other three tulips uh, because I noticed that I thought the first tulip I painted was a little bit too pale. So I'm trying to do better for the other three, but I am going to do something to give these a little bit more life in a second. I do want to mention that before I start painting, I think out uh, which colors are going for which flowers. I have a pretty decent color scheme, or I have a pretty set color scheme figured out before I start painting. I do mix my colors before I paint every flower, and that is going to help me because that makes sure that all the tulips are going to have the same color as well. Now once I've painted all four tulips, or painted the first layer, um, that first tulip is dry and then I can do some dry on or, or some wet on dry technique for my watercolors. That is going to give me more detail because the paint isn't going to fade into the water so you can create harsh lines. I don't want them too harsh but I'm kind of flicking my brush uh, from top to bottom for the orange and from the bottom to the top for uh, the pink just to create some veins on these tulips or some shadows just to add a bit of interesting texture. I'm going to mix my paint even darker because I didn't think it was dark enough the first time. So I'm going to go over that again with a bit of a darker paint and I'm going to use that one for all four tulips. Now when you're doing this, a lot depends on your brush and how much water you add to the paint. Because for this you want a fine tipped brush, um, so you want a brush that holds its shape. Um, I really like natural hair brushes or these uh, silver black velvet brushes. They really hold their shape nicely over time as well, not just for one painting because the way a brush usually deteriorates <laughs> is that it loses its shape qu pretty quickly. Um, but these ones, they hold their nice fine point very long. 
Now, if you add a lot of water to your paint or a lot of water to your brush, your brush is going to be fatter. It's going to fill up with water and your fine point is going to disappear. It's going to be a lot harder to get to paint details or to do that flicking motion. Now, admittedly, this is the hardest part of watercoloring and it takes the most practice figuring out because usually when we learn something on YouTube, it's easy to see something, but this you can't really see in a video, uh, how much water to add to your brush. So water control is the toughest thing to learn in watercolor and it does take a lot of practice, um, but once you got that down, you can paint anything you want. Now some basic tips for water control. You don't want any puddles of water on your piece. You want to see the paper glistening. You want to see that it's wet, but you don't want to see puddles or any reflections in there. Uh, that is too much water. And again, if you have too much water on your brush, you will notice that you will have less of a fine point when you paint and you'll it, it'll be harder to control where the color and where the paint goes. Sadly, I can tell you how much water is too much water or how much water is just the right amount. Uh, so you'll have to figure it out. You'll have to practice. Just take some scrap pieces of watercolor cardstock, um, paint over a panel that didn't work out. We, ha we all have those laying around or paint on the back and just practice your brush control and how much water you need to paint a certain area uh, um, in a way that you want to or for a look that you want to achieve. Now all the other elements in my bouquet are pretty small so I'm using a very fine point brush for this. This is a number two silver, silver black velvet brush and the other one I used is a number four. Now brush sizes differ wildly <laughs> between brands so just because a number two and a number four is very fine for these particular brushes they might not be so fine for other sets of brushes. Um, they're not universal sizes, sadly, <laughs> so I recommend you go to an art shop yourself and try to find a fine point brush. This is something, brushes, watercolor brushes are something I try my hardest to go to a real <laughs> brick and mortar store for and I don't order them online uh, a lot of the time. I also wanted to mention that this t took me quite a while. It took me a little over half an hour to paint this bouquet and really the most time was spent on the tulips themselves. Uh, the other elements, again, are quite small, so they go a little quicker. I don't have to add too much detail or shading to those. So because watercoloring takes me a lot of time, I want to keep my cards pretty simple once I'm done coloring. So all I'm really doing to both of these cards today is adding a frame to them. Now I'm going to do that in two different ways. For this first card, I am literally just die cutting a frame. I used the Fine Frames cover die from Altenew to cut a bunch of frames. It cuts out a bunch of frames at once and I just chose a size that worked for my card. And I cut that two times out of white cardstock and once from a Welsh gold glitter cardstock. This is from um, Tonic Studios, I think. And I'm just going to glue those layers together and glue that on the front of my card. Now, I really like when an element goes outside of a frame. I think it gives a lot to a design. It adds a lot of movement to your design because the tulips obviously are escaping the frame here and there or just coming into the frame. It's It just always works. A frame is a really easy way to pull something together, to pull your card together. If you're unsure of a design, try to create a frame for it and it usually works out. Frame dies are my most used dies probably. I buy them a lot and I use them a lot. I pretty much collect them. I really love them. And I'm going to finish this off with a sentiment from Altenew as well. This is the Fancy Hello die and I cut that again out of two layers of white cardstock and once from the brushed rose cardstock from Altenew. This is a really pretty metallic color. I love it. I'm going to add a bunch of teeny tiny slivers of foam tape behind that 
um, and that is going to prop it up and give it some dimension to have it stand out a little bit more from that watercolor panel. Now my second card is very different. I am going to use the Books Are Magic stamp set from Altenew and these images are extremely detailed. So that means I'm going to color them in differently. I'm going to use a couple of different watercolor techniques for this. I'm also going to paint a background, which is one of the things I struggle with most in watercoloring. So I'm going to give you some tips from a person who still struggles with backgrounds in watercoloring um, to make it look a little bit better in the end, even if you're not perfect at painting a background. So I'm going to start out again by stamping my image and this is going to be a one layer card. I know I want to create a frame and I know again that I want these books, this these books, this pile of books to go outside of that frame. So I am stamping it where I know the frame won't reach completely. It's a little bit off to the side. I do prefer my card designs to be a little bit off center. I think that's a little bit more interesting usually than putting something smack dab in the middle. <laughs> Again, I am going to heat emboss this image with some clear gloss super fine embossing powder by WOW, heat setting that with their dual speed heat tool, and then I can start by painting in the books. Now again, this is sped up. But first, for these books, I always go in with some paint that's not too wet, so just a little bit of paint. And then I dry off my brush and I go in with clear water to blend out the paint. So this creates some shading, some subtle shading, um, but it's, it's great for detailed images because you're not working with too much water usually and you get a lot more control about where the shadows go. Now I also didn't bother too much <laughs> with all the shading in this book pile because the image is so detailed it doesn't need a bunch of shading. Still I am doing the same thing over and over again so I am adding my paint first and then blending it out with a brush just with some uh, clean water. There are some details on these books that I paint darker. I also try to add some drop shadows here and there where I think they are necessary. But overall, there are so many lines on this stamped image already uh, that you don't have to add too much. You don't have to worry about it too much. I am using that number two brush again. So this is the finest brush I own probably. <laughs> and that also helps with all of these tiny, tiny details. Now while I'm painting these books, let's talk a little bit more about the watercolor supplies I'm using today. We've already went into the brushes, but I wanted to mention the paper I'm using is Kenson XL Watercolor 300 GSM cardstock. I always like a 300 GSM cardstock for, um, for watercoloring because it buckles a lot less, especially for this one where we're going to be painting a background that is going to be very helpful. Kenson Excel watercolor cardstock is also quite affordable, so that's a big plus in my book. Um, and yeah, it's just a great cardstock for watercoloring. I buy it in huge sheets and I just cut it down into smaller card panels. Now the paints I am using are Magello Mission Gold paints. If you're a fan of Christina Werner, you have definitely seen these and I love them. They're very pigmented, they come in tubes, or my set does at least, and you just squeeze them out onto your palette and the paint will last you years, years and years and years. Um, you don't need much paint when it's so pigmented, so you don't go through a whole tube in a week. <laughs> And it's also a pretty large set, so there's a very good selection of colors. There's a bunch of good basic colors that aren't mixed with any other pigments, so that's always great because it's easier to mix your own colors with um, paints that don't have too many different pigments in them. You can find pigment information for um, decent quality watercolor sets on the back of them or in the description when you're buying them at an online store. So check out the pigment information. If you see a bunch of pigments listed for, listed for one color, it's probably a more difficult paint to mix your own colors with. So keep that in mind. 
Now let's get into painting this background. You can see I masked off the edges of my card or my card panel, and that is going to be the frame for this card. So it's very easy to create a frame uh, on a one layer card, just mask off the edges. I used the grid on my grid mat to make sure I, um, I have the same amount of space on each side of my card masked off. And then I just started painting. I chose a very dark blue. I first used a very fine brush to paint around the book pile. And then I used a flat brush to spread out the color. Now you can see that I really struggle getting a nice even coating of color. I just never figured it out. I don't think it's actually that hard. I'm just probably overthinking it. So to help myself with that, I always make sure that I can paint a bunch of layers on top of it. Because the more layers you add, the more you're going to even out your color. Now, when you're adding layers in watercolor, it is important to first let the first layer dry completely. Because otherwise, you're going to get an even splotchier mess than I always than I started with. So I always heat set it in between with my heat tool and I just make sure to drop in some colors I like. So I started out with a very dark blue. I painted that over the entire thing. Then I added some purple at the top and some teal at the bottom. And obviously that teal is not going to be super light teal. That dark blue from before is going to show through. But it is going to add some teal <laughs> to that dark blue. It's not going to just look like that first dark blue anymore. I'm adding in pink as well at the top just to make that purple show through a little bit more. Again, this is going to be very dark. I don't expect this to get lighter as I go on. I wanted a dark background. Um, but yeah, once you're done with that, it's not even yet. But to help with that, I just add some intentional splatter. That is going to make the blotchiness look a little bit intentional as well. So I just added some clean water and I'm going to pick that up with a, ta with a paper towel. And that is going to give me some whitish splatter, some lighter splatter on top. To add some more magic to this, I am going to add some gold splatter as well. And this is a metallic watercolor from Colorro or Fine Tech, depending on where you are in the world. Um, and I'm just going to let that sit for a bit and mix in my water really well. Because these are weird watercolors. <laughs> you want to make sure uh, the pigment is really mixed in with the water so you can add, so you can have a very nice gold shine. I did heat set that splatter immediately because sometimes when you're when you add it to a dark background it picks up the color of your background a little bit um, and I didn't want that I wanted a true gold now to have that gold appear in some other places on my card I'm going to paint a frame around this this is not gonna look perfect I don't expect it to when I start out <laughs> I don't know how to paint a straight line so um, I just know that it's going to look like I hand painted this and I want it that way because there's definitely ways you can <laughs> help yourself paint a straight line but sometimes that handmade feeling is just really fun. It adds a little touch of whimsy to this card, I think, with that magical book pile and that fun magical background as well. I really, really love the feeling of this card. Now on this one layer card, the frame we created with the masking and now the painting does a lot of work. <laughs> it's um, really pulling this card together because even though it's a one layer card, because the books go outside of the frame, it really makes them look or makes them appear as if they are very much in the front of the background. background. They seem to be popped up and dimensional, even though they aren't. Now, my card panel, I wanted to add some stamping and some heat embossing to this, but I knew my watercolors weren't completely dry yet. It takes a while for them to be super, super dry. So I added a bunch of anti-static powder, and that is why my watercolor panel looks a little bit dusty. It's because it is. Um, I'm adding my stamps on top. 
and I should have waited to add my anti-setting boss anti-static powder because once you add the stems to it it's going to take some of that powder away and you have to reapply it so i'm stamping a sentiment and some little sparkles that are in the books are magic stamp set as well with versamark ink and i'm adding some wow gold rich pale embossing powder to this this is the embossing powder that matched my gold paint the most it's not a perfect match but it's close enough doesn't have to be perfect now the heat setting definitely warped my panel a little bit so i am going to struggle a teeny tiny bit when adhering this to the card um, i wanted to finish this card and the video in time usually i would add the panel under a pile of books first and have it flatten out now i can just do this once it's already on the card and um, even out the card under a pile of books but yeah usually I do that before I adhere the panel I just wanted to finish the video <laughs> now you can see there's a lot of shine in that background there seems to be a lot more because of the splatter we added as well and I love how these frames create two completely different cards um, and I am very happy that I finally got to show you a bunch of watercoloring on this channel because I keep thinking of making a whole series on watercoloring and then that seems like a lot of work and I'm not sure if people would be interested. So if you are interested in a series more on watercoloring, definitely let me know in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. Um, I really enjoy painting with my watercolors and I think the stamps from Altenew are definitely uh, perfect for it. The whimsical books were so fun to color and those flowers, I mean flowers are always fun to paint. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to hear about your thoughts in the comments as well. Leave a like if you liked the video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of my videos. Thank you so much for watching, don't forget the giveaway over on Instagram and I hope to see you next time.